Welcome to our Spotlight series on the K-12 Service Learning Standards for Quality Practice. In this video, we will be focusing on meaningful service. Before we start, this video is brought to you by the National Youth Leadership Council. For 30 years, the National Youth Leadership Council has transformed classrooms, empowered teachers, and captivated students by leading the way in providing high-quality, dynamic service learning content to school districts, classrooms, out-of-school youth programs, and everything in between. NYLC provides programs and services that develop young leaders, support educators, and advance the field of service learning through programs, professional development, and the National Service Learning Conference. Service learning is an approach to teaching and learning in which students use academic knowledge and skills to address community needs. As an example, picking up trash on a riverbank is service, Studying water samples under a microscope is learning, and when science students collect and analyze water samples, document their findings to a local pollution control agency, that is service learning. In 2008, the service learning field released evidence-based standards and accompanying indicators that K-12 practitioners can use to ensure high-quality service learning practice. For decades, those involved in service learning have known that quality matters if service learning is to live up to its promise of helping young people grow in academics and civic engagement. Now educators have a set of standards and indicators to, to guide them in improving their practice. In this video, we are focusing on one of the eight K-12 service learning standards for quality practice, meaningful service which is defined as service learning that actively engages participants in meaningful and personally relevant service activities. While this definition gives us a broad overview of the standard, we will use these indicators for meaningful service, which encompass the body of research behind the standards to understand what meaningful service really looks like in practice. The first indicator is experiences are appropriate to participant ages and developmental abilities. The project must deal with an issue that can be understood by learners and they must be reasonably well able to perform the corresponding service activity. In 2008, Fredericks and Billig created a literature review that pulled evidence for meaningful service that can be found in our Lyft multimedia tool. Within this review, they cited Joseph Pierce, the author of the book Evolution's End, claiming the potential of our intelligence. I will quote from the literature review. Pierce described the process of making meaning as an essential but often overlooked part of a young person's emotional growth. Unfolding a sense of meaning occurs in three stages. First, beginning around age 11, youth experience an idealistic image of life that becomes more palpable as they move into adolescence. Second, around age 14 or 15, young people feel strongly that something tremendous is supposed to happen. Finally, adolescents sense a secret, unique greatness in themselves that seeks expression. To fulfill these yearnings, young people search for a vehicle through which they can express their unique gifts and a person who can provide a strong role model for accomplishing this mission. Another way to dissect what is developmentally appropriate is to look at the idea of community. For very young children, community might mean their family, their class, even their school. As young people grow and start to understand the broader world and its interconnectedness, their idea of community can grow as well. It is not to say that young, very young children cannot perform service with an international reach, but the teacher would need to build their understanding up to what that means exactly. The next indicator for meaningful service is that quality service learning addresses issues that are personally relevant to participants. I thought this picture was a perfect example. A young man who requires glasses to see can understand how difficult life would be if he did not have access to proper eye care. But how can we get his peers with better vision to collaborate with him if they don't have this, hold the same understanding? If an educator is looking for strategies to find out what exactly their students care about, they may use an interest survey, ask their students to do research on social media or with their peers, or check out the news. But for many students, especially those who have never been asked to serve, it might not come so easily. As educators, we must find ways to make the service meaningful for the young people through an investigation model that begins to wrap the student's heartstrings around an issue, making them personally connected. 
The third indicator states that quality service learning must provide participants with an interesting and engaging service activities. In the same lit review I referred to earlier, Fredericks and Billig cited a, a 2005 study from Billig, Root, and Jesse, and I quote, Meaningfulness was related to students making important decisions, developing their own ideas for projects, and feeling that they had made a contribution and expressing challenge. As your student, asking your students if they have experienced these opportunities within the project is a great way to evaluate whether the experience was meaningful for them. The fourth indicator states that quality service learning encourages participants to understand their service experiences in the context of underlying societal issues being addressed. Students should be encouraged to analyze how the need they are addressing is but one step toward a broader vision of tackling the problem on the local, national, and global levels. Through learning and reflection, students are capable of comparing their life situations to those of people they serve and place any need or problem in the local or global context. Once students start to consider the possibility of changing social problems, they realize the importance of learning component. It takes service to meet the needs, but knowledge and skills to end them. And the final indicator states that service learning leads to attainable and visible outcomes that are valued by those served. As educators, we must pay attention to how students perceive their relationship with the recipients of service they provide. In 2008, Rune Billig affirmed that students found meaning in their service when they interacted with individuals faced with personal difficulties, confronting examples of injustice or encountering inefficient policies. Although students may only be making a small dent in a larger social problem, it's still important for participants to see the direct effect they are making which will then encourage them to continue to take action and be civically engaged in the future. I leave you with this quote by Fredrickson and Billig in their literature review from John Dewey, a learning theorist who set the foundation for service learning. Dewey said that learning itself is a constant process of making meaning of the world in one's individual experiences within social contexts. He believed that all personal development development occurred when initial desires and instincts are tempered by learning experiences and shaped into more purposeful and conscious actions. For more information on the K-12 Service Learning Standards for Quality Practice and to see these standards in action through video, we encourage you to investigate the multimedia learning tool LIFT at lift.nylc.org. We also welcome you to join a free network of over 3,000 youth and adults engaged in service learning by visiting the Generator School Network. Within the site, you can learn, plan, and connect related to a broad set of service learning related topics.